Hi, Nate here with the King of Random. Do your marshmallows always turn out looking like this, burned up to a crisp and barely edible? Well, have we got a solution for you. Guys, before we get into the video, Grant's book, 52 Weekend Projects, is now available for purchase. If you pre-ordered your book and submitted a receipt, keep an eye out for a separate package where we will be sending you a signed book plate. Guys, we are so excited that this is finally live. Check the link in the description below to order yours today. Okay, so I've watched too many infomercials in my time. However, this is a real problem uh, for a very small part of the people in the world. Uh, maybe problem is too strong of a word. However, I appreciate marshmallows, especially when they're perfectly roasted. And some people just always end up with something like this, which you know, if you really enjoy that, then you do you. I don't want to tell you you're wrong. I just disagree with you deeply on a personal level. So the other day I saw some pictures online, people were posting of like their perfectly roasted marshmallows and I thought, I bet I could come up with a way to do that every single time. Now when I'm cooking marshmallows on a campfire, I like to think I'm pretty good at it. I get a nice golden caramelized outside, but Everyone likes their marshmallows cooked a little bit differently. Some people aren't patient enough to wait for hot coals, which in my opinion is what you need for the best cook. But today I wanted to see if it was possible to build a device that lets you cook a marshmallow perfectly every time. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, we've got a couple pieces of steel pipe and we're also gonna be using a little bit of high heat cement. If you don't have access to that, you should be able to do a pretty good job with a plaster and sand mixture similar to what Grant used when he first built the backyard foundry. It may not hold up as well over time, but I think it will do a pretty good job, at least in the short term, and maybe it'll hold up for a good long while. Now real quick, I also want to point out that I am actually uh, filming everything today by myself. My cameraman's not in town right now, Mark's gone for a while, so I'm just filming this sort of a little bit vlog style. I'm gonna have the camera on tripod at times and I'm gonna just try and get actually good up close shots like you guys are used to, but it is all being shot on a cell phone. And I just wanna show you my process as I go through this build and test out if it's going to work well. All right, starting off, let's look at what I was talking about. We're gonna need, I've got a metal pipe. In fact, I've got two metal pipes here, one larger and one smaller. As you can see, the diameter of our larger pipe is coming in at about four and a half inches outer diameter with a, an inner diameter of just four and a quarter inches inner diameter. If you've got something close to that, it should work. It doesn't have to be exactly four and a quarter. I don't think that's gonna cause any problems. With our smaller pipe over here, we have an outer diameter of it looks like just under three inches and an inner diameter of about two and a half. And what I have, I just got from a place called Metal Mart. It sells metal near me and it's by the pound. So I just got these, it was like 82 cents a pound and you don't need this much. We're actually just gonna cut seven inches off of either pipe. But first, there's a ton of rust on this. So I'm gonna grab some steel wool and try and clean it off just a bit. With some of that rust scraped off these pipes, we should have an easier time marking where we want to cut them. And like I said, we're gonna cut them at seven inches. So I'm just gonna mark all the way around both of these pipes and then we're going to use an angle grinder to cut those off. All right, with the two different pipes cut, we're just gonna take a couple files and smooth off the edges because these are pretty rough. I don't wanna cut myself, so normal file. So now what we have are two pipes. The main goal is to get one to nest concentrically inside the other and to hold there just right. Um, and what we're gonna be using for that is some high temperature concrete. It's the same stuff that we used to line the most recent version of our backyard foundry. It's a high temperature cement. It works pretty well from what we've seen there. That gets up to really high temperatures, 2200 Fahrenheit. This is not going to get as hot as that. But a couple last steps we're gonna do before we attach these two pieces together is we need a place for the heat to go. And we're gonna be using just a normal propane blowtorch as our source of heat. And we need to have a sort of entry nozzle on the side of the larger pipe. And then I think we'll also sand and clean out the inside of this pipe as well because this is going to be the one that's closest to the food and having it a little bit cleaner won't hurt. So here is our heat resistant cement. We're gonna be using like maybe half a cup of this stuff. Just gonna mix it up with water until it's just barely a paste enough that I can mold it and move it around. And then I'm gonna put the two cylinders, the small one inside the big one, and just take little blobs of this stuff and drop it down to the bottom. 
and then just use a chopstick to compress it so it's mostly flat down at the bottom and has a good seal. The cylinder now has cement at the bottom and what we need to do is just let it cure. So we're gonna let this go overnight to let that harden up. And now what we're gonna do, this is just a heat resistant brick and I'm gonna take the torch, which as established, it fits nicely into the hole that we drilled in between the two pipes. I'm gonna turn this on and let it just burn for a little while. This is probably best done outside. I've already done it this one. The first time there's gonna be some fumes, vapors, stuff burning off, any of that paint that I missed, for example. Um, but just to show you the setup, I'm gonna set it up right here, get it going a little bit. We've got the whole burner set up with the two pipes and the propane tank, but what we don't have is a good way to feed the marshmallows into that. So here's what we've got going on. We have a piece of two by four, these two eye bolts, two washers, and some super glue. I've also got some super glue accelerator because it makes it go faster, not 100% necessary. The washers are intentionally almost the exact same size as this dowel I'm using. It's a fairly thin dowel. You can see it's not super thick. It's definitely more sturdy and robust than just a bamboo skewer, but it's not half an inch thick. It's more like a quarter. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a couple of holes into this two by four, almost the same diameter as our two eye bolts. We're gonna try and get those really nice and straight, spaced out six to eight inches in our two by four. Then we're going to take the washers and we're going to super glue them in place onto the eye bolts, just like that. We've now got the two components, the heat and the marshmallow stabilizer all built up. Uh, we want to do a little bit of alignment. We want the marshmallow roasting stick to fit perfectly in the very center of our roaster so that it's getting even heat all the way around it. So at the moment, the stick is far too high up. If we had a marshmallow on there, it would probably be touching the top. So we're just gonna take the stick out and we can twist these down until they're lower. You definitely want the two at the same height because if one of them is higher or lower than the other, the stick is going to be at an angle. And we don't want it angled, we want it straight. All right, I think that's about at the right height, but just to be sure, I'm gonna test it with a marshmallow. It's pretty darn centered to me. On camera, honestly, it looks like it's a little bit too low, but in person, the top and bottom gaps look almost identical. And because we do have a mostly cylindrical marshmallow and we are going to be rotating it, even if we're off by a few millimeters, it shouldn't make too big of a difference. Let's fire this up and we're gonna let it run for two or three minutes before we start cooking the marshmallow to try and get a nice even heat in there, but then we'll just see how well it cooks. A beautifully, evenly golden brown marshmallow cooked to perfection, warm and gooey all the way through. Excellent for all your s'mores needs. This is working fantastic. Guys, I've tried this out. You can actually do multiple marshmallows at a time. I've done up to four, although with four, what ends up happening is you have at least one of the marshmallows too close to the heat source. So right around here, it's too hot. That's why this is more than just like three, four inches long. You actually wanna cook from about here to here. So at the halfway point is about as far forward as you want the marshmallow to go. So from here to here, you get pretty even heat. You go farther back and it starts getting a little more toasty. And that's fine if you like it like that. But if you're trying to do multiple at once, you just have to be aware that the ones cooking up here will cook faster than the ones cooking back here. This works perfectly for marshmallows. I do wanna try one more thing. I'm going to see if I can cook a hot dog in here, which is you know kind of the second most thing cooked over a fire with a stick. Hot dogs, check. 
Is it possible to roast the perfect marshmallow every time? I say yes it is. This contraption actually works really, really well. You have great control over how cooked you want your marshmallow. If you like it lightly done, cool. If you're the kind of person who likes it blackened, well, at least it makes it easy to get it nice and evenly blackened. You should get a nice equal char on all sides of the marshmallow. To me, it works perfectly. It gets me exactly the kind of marshmallows I want. Crispy and golden on the outside, warm and gooey on the inside, melts beautifully onto a s'more. It's fantastic. You can do two at once with no problem. Four, you can do, you end up with sort of a gradient. But guys, it's pretty easy to build. Like I said, the plaster and sand should work pretty much just as well as the high temperature cement stuff that I was using, at least for a while. It may not last quite as long, but I think you'll get a lot of good use out of it. And this isn't getting nearly as hot as our foundry does, so the lifespan should be extended quite a bit. Guys, the fun doesn't end here. Go ahead and click right there to see our last video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.